Hi, I'm Father Anthony Hannon from Invian Patches, and this is to prepare his way. Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus of Nazareth walked the earth? That he was crucified and was killed? He died? And he was placed in a tomb and that tomb was sealed and guarded? Do you believe that he rose from the dead? That he appeared to Mary Magdalene and the apostles? And after 40 days ascended to heaven before their very eyes? Do you really believe? Do you really, really believe? I know you do. At least most who watch these videos do. But why do you believe? I mean, did Jesus walk through the walls of your locked down house? And show you his hands and his side? And say, doubt no longer but believe? No. So why do you believe? Well, you might say, well, faith is a gift. I just believe. Okay, fair enough. Or you might say, well, I pray and I've experienced God. Maybe you've had some sort of mystical experience. Okay, fair enough. That doesn't happen to very many people, by the way. Or you might say, I've been miraculously healed through prayer. Or I know someone who has. Again, fair enough, but very rare. If it wasn't rare, it wouldn't be a miracle, would it? If it was common. So why do you believe? Let me ask you another question. Do you believe in the existence of electrons? Have you ever seen one? Then why do you believe? Because I'm quite certain that virtually everyone who watches these videos believes in the existence of electrons, yet have never seen one. Well, you might say, well, we have all sorts of scientific theories based on that, and these theories can be experimented upon. So we have empirical evidence. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Let me suggest to you that the reason that you believe in electrons that you've never seen is because your science teacher told you. And why would your science teacher lie to you? Your science teacher was trustworthy. Why would your science teacher lie to you? Well, how about if he didn't teach you that, he wouldn't have a job for very long. You see, we need to believe in the resurrection of Christ and all the implications of that. That he has won the victory over death. He has overcome sin. He's overcome the world. He's ever overcome disease. We need to believe that much more firmly. We ought to believe it much more firmly than we believe in the existence of electrons. And modern man firmly believes in the existence of electrons. The science teacher risked losing his job. The apostles risked losing their lives. Now we know that St. John the Beloved was exiled, but the other apostles we know from historical account or tradition that they were murdered. They were arrested, accused of being an atheist because they did not offer sacrifice to the pagan gods. The Jews were exempt, but the Christians were kicked out of the Jewish community. So they were vulnerable. So they were arrested, accused of being a Christian, which meant that they did not offer sacrifice, that they did not appease the gods. Therefore, they are putting everyone at risk. Sound familiar? But they were given an opportunity to spare their lives. All they had to do was curse Jesus, curse the name of Jesus, which they had already heard that no true believer would do. And sprinkle a little bit of incense on a pagan altar. All they had to do was admit that they were telling a lie. That Jesus never appeared to them. That he's not alive. And where did you hide the body? <laughs> None of them denied the reality. And they were all put to death. A few weeks ago I was in a Walmart. It wasn't very busy. There were shoppers, but... I happened to be the only one checking out at this time. And I noticed that the cashier was a senior citizen. Walmart employs many senior citizens. And we had a little chat and I, I told her that I thought this whole coronavirus thing and the whole uh, measures that are being taken, all the restrictions are blown way out of proportion. It's a big overreach. And she told me she agreed. And then she told me something a little bit on the quiet. Seemed to me like she was holding back tears. 
I mean, she was at work after all. And she said, the saddest thing is, my children won't bring my grandchildren to visit me anymore. And isn't that sad? And isn't that unjust? What is the rule, they say, when you come in from another country? Here in Canada, the rule is that you're supposed to self-quarantine for 14 days. After the 14 days, the virus, if you had it, has run its course. And if you had it, you're not contagious anymore. You're free to go out. Well, children have been quarantined in their own homes for a good three weeks now here in Canada. They're not even permitted to go down the street and, and play with their friends. That tells me that they are not contagious if they had it at all. And there's no way they could have picked it up because they're not even leaving their house. So why not bring your children to visit your parents? I mean, call your parents up, ask them if they're okay with that. I bet you they'd say, oh, I've been waiting for a phone call like that. And why don't you bring your children to your parents and give your children a chance to see them and your parents a chance to have the joy that they've been deprived the last few weeks. Let them see their smiling faces. Let your children go and give them a big hug and tell them they love them. Jesus came to set the captives free and I think it's time to do that. If we trust the mainstream media and the politicians, and why would we trust them so completely to the point of putting ourselves under captivity? I mean, when was the mainstream media ever known to be a reliable source for truth? I've been involved in the pro-life movement for almost 40 years now. Never, never, ever have I found that the mainstream media reported any pro-life event accurately. Indeed, they twisted it and turned it upside down and presented us as being violent and instigators. Lies, lies, lies. And of course, I believe there are good politicians, people that get into politics for noble reasons, and it really is serving the public. But aren't you like me? You're a little bit leery of what politicians say. I mean, I think when a politician speaks, we ought to take what they say with a spoonful of salt, not a grain of salt, a spoonful. Those are my thoughts anyway. I'm going to leave some links to some videos in the description. I think I'm going to try to leave the links in a comment that I will make and pin it as well. I haven't tried that before. I hope it works. And if you haven't watched the other video that I did called Three Ways Out of the COVID-19 Prison, the video is not as important as the links that I give in the description. So please go back there and check that out. Maybe I'll try to pin a comment there as well. Um, because there's so many people that are doing such a good job in investigating and, and exposing the lie and showing what the truth really is. The two videos that I'm going to link to in this video, um, one is a short one that's from uh, Brother Alexis Bugnalo, and I'm sorry, Brother, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. And the other one is from um, Stefan Molyneux's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Stefan Molyneux, maybe a lot of you don't know him, but he's a Canadian, he's a YouTuber, and he promotes philosophy. And I love philosophy, and I find that uh, Stefan is a brilliant man, highly, highly intelligent. He's not Catholic. He's not a believer. Maybe he is, and he's not saying, I don't know. But but uh, in the past, he said that he's atheist. But don't let that stop you, because he does an interview with Dr. Shiva, and some of you have seen Dr. Shiva in other interviews this past week. Um, he's kind of doing the rounds. And this man is so, so knowledgeable. And that interview with uh, Stefan and Dr. Shiva um, is the best video I've seen that rationally demonstrates what is actually going on. It's an hour and a half long almost, but it's time well spent. Please watch it and then share that video or talk with your friends and relatives and let them know 
what is really going on. We need to proclaim the truth. Of course, you believers in Jesus, you know, we have to proclaim, we have to try to evangelize, bring people to Jesus. But on this more common level, for even those who do not have the supernatural faith, let us at least let people know that they're being played, that we're all being conned. And Bill Gates and Dr. Fucci and all the others, they need to be held accountable. Now, I don't know if the people will ever get a fair, fair trial against Bill Gates. I mean, his net worth is something like $10 billion. I don't know. Are there any honest judges out there? Can we find justice? We know that justice will happen in the end. God wins in the end. And no one will get away with any of this crap. Nobody. These are crimes against humanity. They're terribly, terribly evil. God did not do this. I'm all for praying the rosary, pre repenting from your sins, living a holy life. Obviously, I'm all for that. And the world is due for a chastisement. And the church is due for a purification. But this is not it. So fellow believers in Christ, do not accept that this is from God. Pray, let your faith overcome the fear, spread the truth, the real truth, and fight. There's no bloody way that we should be accepting any Bill Gates vaccine and there's no 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 way that we ought to be holding ourselves captive for the Lord is risen from the dead setting the captives free trampling on death by death and then those in the tomb lavishing life he has risen indeed just as he said he would alleluia alleluia may Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.